السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمد عبده ورسوله وبعد اللهم صل وسلم على نبيك محمد صلاة وسلاما تسليما كثيرا Continuing on with the matters of takfir we mentioned some of the major sins. We said they are major sins. And the Prophet ﷺ, he called them kufr. But they are not kufr and akbar. But any of those also, building on, on the last point, the point of istihlal. If someone commits those major sins while declaring them to be halal, then this person is a kafir. Declaring them to be permissible. So someone who drinks alcohol and says, no, it is actually permissible. Then this person is a kafir. He is a kafir because of what? Because of drinking alcohol or because of the istihlal? Because of the istihlal. That is why you said, even if someone does not drink himself, but he did the istihlal, he declared something haram to be halal, then he becomes kafir. And of course, now we come to the conditions of takfir. The conditions of takfir. From the conditions, number one, we have to know, before we get into the conditions, the people who speak about these matters and apply these rulings, they are the people of knowledge. This is not a job for every single person to declare another one to be kafir, uh, or Mubtadi'ah, he's an innovator, or Fasiq, he's an evil sinner. No, it is not the job of everyone. It is the job of the people of knowledge. They are the ones who apply these rulings. You understand? What did I say? They are the ones who apply the rulings. But who should we judge on him that he is kafir or not kafir? How do we judge? Only Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his Sunnah judge, at takfiru haqqullahi wa rasuli. Takfir is the right of Allah, meaning Allah, the one whom Allah said he is kafir, then we say he is kafir. The one whom the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said is kafir, we say he is kafir. We don't initiate that from our own personal grudges. Just because you hate someone, you say he is kafir. No, it is not the right of anyone. You understand? It is the right of Allah. And who applies that? It is the people of knowledge. Before applying it, there's conditions. From the greatest condition, you can say conditions and you can also say mawani' the obstacles, the obstacles from applying the rule. Number one, which is ilm, the opposite of jahl. This person who is doing this act, which is kufr, he has to have done it with knowledge. Like I gave an example before we prayed. That person who said, let's go drinking. And he feels it's okay that in Islam you are allowed to drink as long as you are Muslim is fine. If you or me said that today, then you are kafir. Because you know for sure. And you have seen all the proofs and have been taught clearly that alcohol is from the most major sins. But he was ignorant, a new Muslim, he is excused because of his ignorance. That's an obstacle to the path of takfir. And jahl is the most prevalent obstacle. Proofs for that? We mentioned proofs for that. One is enough. Or maybe there's more. I'm asking you a question. Doing sajda prostration to prostrate to someone is it just a major sin you're still a muslim or you leave islam prostrating to someone making sajda to someone other than allah or something for that sake is it a major sin but you're still a muslim or is it kufr that you're out of islam now you are out of islam if you do that Allah says, لا تسجدوا للشمس ولا للقمر واسجدوا لله الذي خلقهن إن كنتم إياه تعبدون. 
do not make sajda to the sun or the moon. Rather, make sajda to the one who created the sun and the moon if you really worship him alone. That is kufr, kufr akbar. You understand? It's kufr akbar. But the person who did that based upon ignorance. Do we say to him he's kafir? The answer is no. The answer is no. Mu'adh radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu sent him to Syria, to Sham. When he came back, he made sajda to the Prophet sallallahu and the Prophet Sallallahu said, Ma hadha ya Mu'adh, what is this? What is this? And he said, Ya Rasulullah, inni ra'aytu. I saw the Sham. This is what they do to their batariqa, to their priests and their noble leaders. This is what they do to them. This is how they respect them and greet them maybe. And you, you deserve respect more than them. And the Prophet said, It is not allowed for a human being to make sajda to another human being. Why didn't the Prophet say, Naya Mu'adh, you became kafir. Do your shahada again. Or even worse, like the people of today will tell you, the extreme people, we have to kill you now. You understand? This is jahl, not just jahl. Maybe this is not the best example for jahl. This brings us this other second condition or or obstacle, which is what? At ta'wil. At ta'wil. The wrong interpretation. A misinterpretation. You have the right text, but you interpret it wrongly. If someone is a mujtahid, he is a scholar who reached the level of ijtihad, he can deduce rulings from the Quran and the Sunnah. And he deduced the wrong ruling. With a clear intention, he didn't intend to make the bad judgment. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will still reward him, but we say he's wrong. You understand? We say he's wrong, but do we apply the ruling on him? The answer is no. Mu'adh, he was muta'awwil. He made an interpretation. If they deserve that, you deserve it more. You understand? And this is the manhaj and the way of the imams of the Muslims. Imam Ahmad, we read last week in the matters of the Quran. He used to say what about the one who says the Quran is created? What did he used to say? He's kafir. He says the one who says the Quran is created is kafir. Yet, if you, you all of if those who know the, the story of Imam Ahmad, his biography, he was tested a lot. He was whipped, he was put into jail. Because of what? The same issue. Because the leader of that time, he had the evil scholars around him who, who misinterpreted to him that this is the right way. We have to say the Quran is created. And whoever, and this leader was so bad, he used to force the scholars. That is why Ahmad, Imam Ahmad, and Yahya bin Ma'in and others, they were jailed. You understand? How come Imam Ahmad did not say to the leader, you are kafir? How come he didn't say to his followers, we have to revolt against this leader and kill him and remove him? How come? How? Why? Huh? Like Sheikh al-Islam, also when he was tested a lot, he died in jail, we know that. He was tested a lot. He used to say to those leaders and to those evil scholars, he said, if I was to say the statements you say, I will be a kafir. Because I know what you're saying is, is kufr. But you, I cannot say you're kafir. Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah, who people accuse most today and before, those who attach the actions of the khawarij and the groups of the khawarij with what they call the Wahhabis. Sheikh Muhammad al Wahhab used to write because people used to accuse him even during his time. They used to accuse him that you are extravagant. You have no control in proclaiming other Muslims to be kafir. And he used to say, I am not like that. We are not like that. 
And we, he, these are his words, he used to say, we do not proclaim kufr on someone except for something which there is ijma'ah. There is a consensus of all the scholars of Islam that this is kufr. We don't just make it up ourselves. And he used to say, we don't say those people who go to the, to the and he said, the sonam of al-Badawi. You know the grave of Sayyid Badawi, as they call him in Egypt. It's a grave where people go and visit and they do shirk there. He said this was, he said, we don't say those who go and worship the idol of Badawi, they are kafir. Because we say they are ignorant. If only people read about the, the real da'wah of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, they will see that the, most of the allegations are false. The same thing Shaykh al-Albani, the great imam of our time of the sunnah, he was accused of. His students like Shaykh Ali Hassan al-Halabi then read this story. He said one time the minister, the minister of the, of the Islamic affairs in Jordan, he called the sheikh and was very angry screaming at the sheikh. He said you declare other Muslims to be kafir and this and that and that and that. And whoever has listened to the, the tapes of the sheikh, the sheikh he never used to scream. He was always calm. Let the proofs talk. So he said to him, he said to him, he called his name, so and so, Mr. So and so, I'm going to ask you a question. What do you say about those Muslims who go and they make sajda on the grave and they make tawaf around the grave? And the minister said, Kafir, they're Kafir. He said, Shaykh al-Albani said, but we say, they are juhal, they need to be taught. They are ignorant, they need to be taught. And he started apologizing right away. You understand? This is how it is. This is how it is. But then again, there's the matters people can be excused because of ignorance. And there's matters which are the basics of Islam. No one is excused. Unless it's someone who's a new Muslim. Like we said, someone who disputes that you have to pray five times a day. That is something something which is basic in the religion. Whoever contests with that and says we don't have to, then this person is going into kufr. You understand? But if he says, yes, I know we have to pray, but you know I'm just lazy. We say he's not kafir. And like I said again, it's a controversial subject. Someone who says, I know it, fasting Ramadan is a must. But you know, some days, you know, I'm, I'm lazy. And Do we say he's kafir? He fasted 26 days, he missed four. And he knows he's doing a sin. Do we say he's kafir? The answer is no. But the one who knows Ramadan is a must, and then he says, no, we don't have to. We have a choice. It's the 21st century. We need to be uh, civilized. This person who has knowledge and says these words, he's kafir. Even if he fasts, we say, right or wrong. So to finalize today these issues of takfir, to finalize. Something very important also, something very important, which is built on all of what I've said. The Ahl Sunnah, they differentiate between the ruling on the naw' and the ayn. Or you can say the fi'l and the fa'il. There's a difference of the ruling of what? Of the action and the actor, the one who does the action. There's a difference between the ruling of what? The action and the one who does the action. So we say, لَيْسَ كُلُّ مَنْ وَقَعَ فِي كُفْرٍ كافر. Not everyone who falls into something which is kufr becomes automatically who? Kafir. No. Why? We've mentioned all of this right now. No, not automatically. You don't say, oh, he did this, he's kafir. No, no, no. No. Does he know? Maybe he has ta'wil. You understand? وَلَيْسَ كُلُّ مَنْ وَقَعَ فِي بِدْعَةٍ مُبْتَدِعَ And not everyone who falls into bid'a innovations, we right away um, take him out of the sunnah that he's an innovator. No. We understand this. This is very essential. And very important. It will give you a clear picture between the difference of Ahl-Sunnah and the other deviated groups. 
especially the Khawarij, who are quick to proclaim other Muslims to be kafir because of major sins they commit. You understand? There's a difference of saying whoever makes sajda to a cross or a grave is kafir and saying Ahmad because he did this is kafir. No, it's a big difference. We say this action is kufr. But does it mean every individual who did this action becomes kafir automatically? The answer is no. The answer is no. And there's so many examples we can give. So many examples we can give. But today the two main problems which appear is first people declaring sins which are not kufr to be kufr. That's the first problem. Sins which are not kufr, they make them kufr. And second, applying wholesome rulings. Wholesome. Wholesome. They tell you, no, that country, no, they're, they're kafir. That leader and his government, they're all kafir. There's 10,000 people in that government, they're all kafir. Some of them, they'll say yes, even the person uh, who did not speak against that government, he's kafir. We say, subhanallah. Maybe he doesn't have the power to speak. Maybe he doesn't like what the leader is doing. We say he's kafir also. And that is what they'll tell you. They say it's okay. You can go put the bomb and kill yourself. You say those Muslims may be there. And maybe those non-Muslims they're innocent. They say oh, Allah will judge them. Subhanallah. Allah will not judge you. Who gave you that, that authority of going to kill innocent people? This is how they fell into these things. And most of those who take people there, they are very good speakers. They are very good speakers. If you listen, you want to listen to the whole series. If you listen, they are very good and passionate speakers. Will they use proofs from the Quran and the Sunnah? The answer is what? Yes. But wrongly. Misunderstood. So everyone has to be very careful. Who do you take your knowledge from? Look this person who you listen to. You listen to what are, what are his usul? What are his foundations? Are they the foundations of Ahl Sunnah? Al Imam Bukhari and 1000 plus shaykhs, the Imams of Islam? Or is it the foundations of the Khawarij? Whom the Prophet وسلم, said, if you look at the way they pray, you look down on your prayer. If you look at the way they recite Quran and do dhikr, you look down on yourself and did not just speak to us. The Prophet ﷺ spoke to who? The Sahaba. said, if you will look down on your prayer compared to them, they read the Quran, they say the best words, it does not pass their throats, they don't understand it properly. He said, وسلم, if I was to meet them, I would have killed them the killing of the people of Ad, meaning wholesome. He said, they are the worst people, the Khawarij. Shirar al-Khalq عند Allah. Even though if you see them, amazing people. And there was the Prophet said, يَقُولُونَ خَيْرُ قَوْلِ الْبَرِيَّةِ They say the best words. But in the wrong way, wrong context, applying it wrongly. As Ibn Umar used to say, they took the verses which were revealed for the non-Muslims and applied them on the Muslims. And I have to put a disclaimer here. Because there's always one or two persons who their hearts are sick sometimes. Not necessarily you, my good brothers, inshallah. They'll say, oh, these ones, they're, they're, they're the people of the, of, the, of the state, you know. They work for those states. They talk for those leaders. Well, if those leaders behind us, you think I'll be driving my poor Nissan Altima. Or what is there? What is there for me or someone, our shiuch, our great scholars who speak like this? What is there for us to fear? That we don't fear Allah more, we fear the leader? Subhanallah. But they use these words, and I'm saying this to you, and most of you have heard this. They say, no, don't listen to those. You understand? A poison. It's a poison in the ummah from that time. A poison. 
So this very briefly is about the matters of takfir. Again, as you, uh, maybe I didn't mention this, but you have noticed, the book we're going through is very small. The Aqeedah of Man Bukhar. It is meant for us to know the basics of Aqeedah. To know we are just establishing what do Ahlu Sunnah believe. What do we believe about Iman? What do we believe about the Quran? What do we believe about Qadr? What do we believe about Takfir? Once you know this, when you hear someone speaking words which you did not hear, Al-Imam Bukhari say, then you know, okay, there's a problem here. You understand? There's a problem here. I will have to stop here. I have to run somewhere tonight. So, three questions only. Number one is here. Number two. Number three. Yes. The rest will answer next week, inshallah. That's a promise. If you're going to forget, write. When someone does that will, we say his action is wrong. But is he liable for a punishment? The answer is no. You understand? Say this action is wrong. The Prophet said to Mu'adh, what is this? Don't do this. But is Mu'adh liable for the punishment? The answer is no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah 2, um, with it Ma'idah, um, what does the ayah say? لَيْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمُنُوا عَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ جُنَاحٌ فِي مَا تُعِمُوا إِذَا مَا اتَّقَوْا وَآمُنُوا عَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ ثُمَّ الْمَائِدَةِ ثُمَّ اتَّقَوْا وَآمُنُوا ثُمَّ اتَّقَوْا وَأَحْسَنُوا وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّوا الْمُحْسِنِينَ This surah, this verse is surah al-ma'idah. Let me tell you the story behind them. Allah says, there is no problem on the believers. Those who believe in Allah and they do righteous actions. Huh? In what they consume. There is no problem for them. As long as they fear Allah and they do good. And they fear Allah and they believe properly. That's what the verses say. One of the Sahaba, or a group of them, when they heard these verses, this is after the time of the Prophet, during the time of Umar. They said these verses say, as long as we fear Allah, there's no problem with what we consume. So they went and they drank alcohol. They drank alcohol. So they declare that alcohol is what? Huh? Halal. What is this? This action is? This action is? Kufr. This action is Kufr. They were brought to Umar. Umar was very angry. Very angry. Then Ali radiallahu anhu he came. I don't remember the story clearly. But this is what I remember. He said no. They did ta'wil. These verses were revealed for the Muslims before alcohol was prohibited. Allah is saying what you drank before, Allah has forgiven you as long as you become good Muslims. But they took it to mean what? It's continuous. You understand? Umar or Ali did not say they are kafir. And there's more proofs. This is an example of ta'wil. An example of ta'wil. Naam. They say the leaders, they don't pray. They take the opinion, whoever misses a, a, a prayer, it becomes kafir. Now the question I asked here last week also. Those who take the opinion that whoever leaves a prayer or leaves prayer becomes kafir. Does it mean one prayer or does it mean he doesn't pray? So let's say someone prayed today, Fajr, Jumaa, he prayed Asr, he missed Maghrib, then he prayed Isha. Do we say when he comes for Isha, no, you have to give the Shahada again, you didn't pray Maghrib. You're kafir. If they say yes, then okay, that's the opinion they take. That's the opinion they take. But we just discussed here. 
of uh, the rulings are not applied on on individuals except by who the scholars people have to sit with these people and explain to them that what you're doing is kufr if they still do it then they are they are being ruled on you understand number two how do you know this leader does not pray how I'm sure we all agree here the 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 one of the standpoints of leadership is what is the secrecy you just see him on TV then you don't see him again right how do you know he doesn't pray you understand how do you know he doesn't pray mm. What about the one who doesn't fast? Does he become kafir? He said kufr. Is it kufr which is takes you out of Islam or is it kufr meaning you're still a Muslim covering major sin? Okay. If he does not specify that one of the principles of takfir also we say what? Man thabata islamuhu biyaqeen Huh? Whoever's Islam is affirmed with certainty, we know he's a Muslim. It is not to be taken away except with certainty. We don't base things on doubts. Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahmad, the Imam of Ahl Sunnah, used to say, Nahnu Ahl Sunnah, Jubana Fiddima. We Ahl Sunnah, we are cowards in terms of blood. You have to understand something when you proclaim this person is kafir. It doesn't end there. That's the beginning. Number one, it means if he doesn't repent, you have to kill him Islamically. You understand? His blood becomes halal. Number two, his wife or wives right away, they have to be separated from him. Because a Muslim woman cannot be married to a kafir. Number three, if he dies or they die, they don't inherit each other. You see that? It's not something simple. It's not something simple. If you are ready to take on that responsibility, then you take that responsibility. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say, or he said, "Man qala li akhihi ya kafir, faqad ba'a bihi ahaduhuma." Whoever says to his brother, "You are a kafir," then it is deserving of one of them. إن كان قما قال وإلا رجع عليه. If he is not a real kafir, it returns back to you. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, proclaiming a Muslim to be kafir قتله is like killing him. The sin of it. You understand? It's not simple matters which people want to make very simple. They put a video for you on YouTube. They tell you, okay, all these people, they're kafir. And everyone who lives in Canada, they sub because they didn't speak, so it means they're supported tacitly. So all of them, their blood is halal. A'udhu billah. Which Islam is that? Whose understanding is that? You understand? But the issue both of you are asking about is the issue of tariq is salah. The one who lives salah. And this is an issue I said before so many times. Our scholars, the scholar of Ahl Sunnah, they differed. A great differing. Does he become kafir or not? And we follow the opinion of the Jumhur, the majority, who used to say he's not kafir. As long as he does not dispute the obligation of salah. He knows praying is a must, but he's just lazy. He's not kafir. And there's proofs for that. You understand? And those who say he's kafir, they have an opinion they hold. It should not be a matter for Ahl Sunnah uh, to conflict between each other. Because it's a matter which existed from before. You understand? Mm. I said three questions. Those who have more questions, you know where to find me.
Six days a week, I'm here. If you want to come tomorrow, Fajr at Salahuddin, you'll find me there. If you have, still have your questions. Otherwise, you have my number, 647 something something. I don't know. Allah. What is the number? I keep forgetting it. I know the last one is 4496. There's no WhatsApp for that number. What is the number? The, the Q&A number. Or otherwise, you write your questions, you come back with them Friday. Who has that number? 6384496. 6384496647. Uh, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, We'll continue next week, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Shadun la ilahi la anta. Astaghfiruka tu